Well, hello and welcome back to the Security Kitchen. My name's Ken and we're going to be looking at the demonstration that we did for the InfoSec 2014 um, show this year. Now, those of you who came along, you'll know that we were messing around with JTAG ports and using them to scrape memory. For those of you who didn't see us, here's a quick recap. Now, the JTAG port is uh, it's well defined. It's typically used by chip firmware developers in order to debug the code as they're writing it. So um, it allows you to do things like um, iterate the CPU clock cycle by cycle so you can see where your code's going wrong, but it also has loads of other functionality. Um, for this particular demonstration, we're going to be using um, the ability in some cases to extract memory using the JTAG port. We're going to particularly be looking at Android, but uh, one of the things I want to compliment um, Apple on actually is they've actually given quite a bit more thought to the security of their JTAG ports. They don't publish their, um, the protocols used to communicate with them. Um, and to, to my knowledge, no one's successfully communicated with the JTAG ports um, other than Apple and their own developers um, in recent years anyway. So here is my close-up micro, uh, microscope. Now actually you've got this, this is a teardown of my iPhone 3. It doesn't work anymore, I'm afraid. But actually that's the back of it. And you can see quite clearly on the back here, the JTAG ports have been identified. You can see how tiny they are. They're the six ports to the left here. Now, as I said, unless your micro soldering is extremely good, you're not going to get to talk to those. Um, so we're going to be looking at Android. And the reason we're looking at Android, well, it's because in many cases, um, the JTAG ports are much easier to get to and they're much easier to talk to as well. The protocols have been decoded. Now, the first case, we've actually got a teardown of an S4 here. This is the, uh, the motherboard. You need to power it up. But if you go and let's look at a close up of that, and you actually see quite easily, really easy to access, are the JTAG ports down here. Now, to talk to those, I'm going to need a connector, something like this. You can buy them quite cheaply online. And that then connects to a ribbon cable, and I'll show you what that does next. Now, Another example of this one, we're actually going to show the example using the S4, but um, here's the Nexus 4, and that's the back of it, and we can see the uh, JTAG connector really quite easily. Just in there, you can see it's actually quite accessible. Whilst the, point of the pins are quite tight, it's quite easy to get a connector like this. That lines up with them neatly. Talk to your ribbon cable, and off you go. Now, a lot of manufacturers, frankly, don't really want you talking to their JTAG ports. Um, so they don't publish their protocols, and they can make life really quite difficult for you. That's when you're going to need something a bit like this. This is a JTAGulator written by a guy um, called Joe Grand. Really cool guy, and actually actually help you start decoding some of the protocols um, and starting to work out how to talk to a JTAG um, interface that you don't know how it works. Now, the next thing we're going to need is to connect that ribbon cable, we're going to need a riff box. And this is the point where I really need to hand over to my uh, capable assistant who knows a lot more technically than I do. Ian, can you tell us all about the riff box and what it does? Yeah, sure. So <clears throat> the riff boxes are quite cheap. You can get them from eBay for about 100 quid. Um, they're normally used by the guys that um, run the mobile phone shops, um, probably used for kind of unlocking, resurrecting dead phones, that type of stuff. Um, the reason why we're going to use it is because it's got a big old database of um, uh, uh, mobile phones, so it already knows about the JTAG. Um, specifications so we can easily just point and go. So I'm just going to show you here on my laptop. <clears throat> Basically, I've got the um, uh, JTAG manager software loaded here. And what we're going to try and do is we're actually um, going to connect up. So at the bottom here, we've got the um, uh, cable connected up, like Ken mentioned, up to Riftbox into my USB connection to my laptop. So what we're going to try and do is actually talk to it. So what we're going to do now is connect, um, connect and get the ID. And hopefully what that will do it was go off and get the two um, uh, tap interfaces on this phone. Within a JTAG connection, you can have many tap interfaces. Um, so in this point, we've got the actual CPU and then the, uh, the radio is the, um, the first one there. So cool. So now we can actually talk to it. We want to now um, start to really get into the, um, the, the actual flash uh, memory itself. So if we can go over to um, uh, this uh, plug-in here within the JTAG manager, and we can actually start to then read the um, partition tables of the um, device itself. And those familiar with the actual um, Linux operating system is pretty much similar. Um, and what we're going to do now is just click um, load layout from device. And what that will do is directly query it, and it will display all of the um, uh, partitions there. Now, what we want to do is because this device is encrypted, um, there's already an MDM um, enforced policy on there, it's turned on its default encryption. What we want to do is actually try and decrypt that so we can actually read the, the data on itself. So there's the two partitions we want. One is the user data, is where all the sensitive information is. Um, and the other one is the metadata partition, is where all the crypto information. So we're just going to go here and if I quickly just select <clears throat> the actual uh, metadata one and I'll just read select here, we can see there it's come up with um, some crypto information. So we know that there's, that's the one we want. So we're just going to 
save those off. Um, and um, we're going to then dump the user data partition. Now, the user data partition with the Nexus 4 is either 8 or 16 gig. The problem here, the throughput from the ref box to the actual laptop itself is um, about, I think it's about 150k a second. So, you know, it's going to take a while. So we've, um, we've prepared one earlier, so we've already done that. Um, but I'm just going to hand back to Ken, and he's going to talk to you about the actual um, radiations you can do to actually stop this from happening. Sure. So we're going to go about cracking that pin in the next video. But in the meantime, you need to give serious thought as to whether you're prepared to allow Android devices into your organization. Now, maybe you connect them to your Exchange server. Well, you probably want to have another layer of security. And those sort of products are called uh, mobile device management tools, or MDMs. Um, the problem with those is the majority of them just enforce policy that local handset can do. And if it's local handset encryption, then we've just shown you, you can blow it apart within a matter of minutes using the JTAG cable. There are some MDM products that work quite differently. They have a, a separate encryption container that works independently of the local operating system. Um, so when you're out there looking for a security um, product to go over the top of your uh, mobile devices, which you really do need, um, make sure they have separate encryption containers that aren't just doing policy enforcement. Yeah.